Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back in God's house. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. How many of you are glad to be back in this house? Amen. Oh, come on. I said, how many of you are glad? to do a work. Amen. I am glad to know that we're back in this house. I tell you what, it feels like forever since we've been here. So that must mean everybody's ready to have church, right? Amen. Amen. Ready to have church today. Yeah, we're good church. Yeah, we're good church. Amen. Anybody got a praise report? I want to thank the Lord for keeping his hand on us and keeping hand on my family and I know he's saving, delivering my husband and my children, and I'm standing on that. As long as we stand on his word, he will not fail. Praise your Lord that my sister-in-law does not have cancer that the doctors are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Valerie, you got a praise report, don't you? Oh. <laughs> Well, I thank the Lord for me and all my family, for sure. Amen. The Lord. Amen. And, um, and before, even before I left Corbin, <coughs> the church and this, this scripture, you know, hopped out at me in Genesis 50, verse 19, where, um, I'll read it, it's saying how you put it on the clock. <laughs> but anyway, um, it was, we were talking about Joseph. And when his brothers, you know, you know the story about his brothers, you know, went kill him and leave him for dead and everything. And this is when his father had died. And they were really scared about what, you know, because they knew they had wronged him, you know, for all the years. And they were really scared to bring the word back that his father had passed away. And so they said he was going to kill him. And when you think about the ones, you know, that had been wronged and all the stuff, beatings and everything else, and how. You know, they're quick to forgive, and it's just like, don't make, sometimes it don't make sense in our minds, you know, like, how they endure this, you know, and still want to um, forgive. Wait, wait, it says, they approached him, and they were saying, I know we've done you wrong, blah, 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 you know, and I hope you don't um, kill us pretty much. And he, Joseph said unto them, fear not, for I am in the place of God. Well, see, I ain't always been in the place of God. I mean, sometimes I've been in a place where I want to look for I ripped your hair out, you know. But Joseph was in the place of God. Yes. And I pray that we're always in the place of God. Yes. Because I mean, I know I have trials, you know, there's ones to come, there's ones now. And I hope I'm found in the place of God where I can handle them like Joseph did here. Yes. Instead of go off tearing them up and lashing out at them and running my mouth and, yeah. you know. Getting on the phone, whatever we do, you know. Yes. Everything but take it to God. But yes. He's already in the place of God. Yep. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen. 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 Good Amen. Good preaching. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Tell our good church. Yes. Uh, the. You know, the scripture says we are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Yeah, right. So that's why I wanted to start today out with testimony. I know we usually wait until the end, but you know what? We need to come into his courts with praise. Yeah. We do. We need to come into his courts, you know. And when we come into here, when we come into this place, we come to get our mind upon Jesus. So, well, before we get started, let's just begin to lift up our hands and worship him today. and Just begin to love on him because I'm telling you, when we begin to love on the Lord, he begins to love right back on us. That's right. That's what worship, praise and worship is, is when you begin to adore him. That's right keep falling in love with him over and over. That's what we come into his, his courts with, you know. And I thank God, you know, that we can come into his house and we can worship him in spirit and in truth. But he's the same God here as he is over at Papa John's when I'm working. That's right. I've seen him do some wonderful things over there and open up doors for me to be able to witness to people. He's the same God at Walmart. And so we should be the same everywhere we go. And That's every good. person that we come in contact with. So your prayer request today. Let's pray for a lady named Bonnie Mack. She used to do my hair when I lived up north and uh, it was strange that uh, they would talk about you need to go about forgiving people. She's having a really, really hard time right now. Yeah. 
from even her own family members that's keeping her from seeing her mother. Yes. And her mother is in the hospital right now, and she is aching with sorrow. So please pray for her name. Yes. Her name is Bonnie Mack. Please lift her up in prayer that God help her to forgive these people that's doing her that way, and she'll be able to see her mother before she passes away. Yes. It's really yes. so sad. Also remember Lena with the broken heel thing. I just pray that he'll start using wigs on his bell again. Well, not the bell and pull his arm all up. So just pray for him. <coughs> pray for our son, Brad, and Barb and Connor and Paul. And uh, pray for our friend, Margaret, that lives up in the north. Pray for her husband, Hank. He had cancer and he got in remission for several years. And now he's real bad to be with his skin. And just pray for that family. And as he goes through this again, he has a feeding tube from what I understand now. Also pray for Christine that comes here sometimes from up north. Uh, all of her family, especially her sister, and also she lost a cousin uh, in, uh, to uh, cancer. Uh, and I, I praise God for Pauline Patterson that's back on the mend. She was really, yes. really sick there for a long time. They didn't yes. know she was going to pull through, but pray, praise God she was able and back home and everything. And I pray for our sister Rebecca Mason and her husband and her mom. They all have several health issues, plus she lost her dad not long ago. Uh, pray for Lori. That's uh, James Calder that comes here a few times. That's his sister. She is going to have a bowel surgery again for I don't know how many times this has been. And she has been in so much pain that when she's just been her double, and she just hurts so bad, and they can't seem to find out exactly what's wrong, except they do say there was a botched surgery back a few years ago, and it never did get well, so pray for her, and pray uh, that she'll get in church, because uh, I know she believes in the Lord and everything, and she has a talent to sing, and if she could get back in the house of God, I believe she'd be all right, and also just keep her brother James Calder in your uh, prayers, too, and for his mother, Lois, to have strength to take care of him, he's still, uh, he's at home, I think, but uh, he's uh, been having some weak spells and falling around. And let's just pray for all that's sick and grieving all over the world, but there's so many that we couldn't even mention, even the ones that we all know about, we couldn't even mention them. So uh, just pray for them all and uh, pray for Brother David Reed. He still needs uh, several, uh, he has several needs before God. And just pray the Lord to help him to make the right courses and all things. And pray for a young man up north. He's only 22 years old and he's already on dialysis and he's not doing too good. So. Just continue to minister to him, but he does go to church, thank God for that. And also a man named Stephen, he's a young man, probably in his 30s. He's uh, in deep depression, but he does go to church. Just pray that he finds the peace that he needs in the church he's going to, and if he don't, he'll find another church and everything. But uh, his uh, mother told me that uh, she was so pleased that the Lord laid down my heart to write him a letter over Christmas. Awesome. And she uh, wrote me back on the computer. I hadn't even seen her on the computer about six months, I guess, and so I couldn't find her to ride me on there, but she had given me her address a long time ago, and the God put it on my heart to send him a card and write him a message, and she wrote me back, and she said he was really pleased to get that, so just pray that the Lord uplift this boy, and he really needs the Lord to touch him, and also uh, pray for uh, the James that has the kidney problems, pray for his dad, Silver, he has a lot of back surgeries that he's been through, and also my brother-in-law, uh, Everly, he's had back surgery, but he's almost on the mend now. Uh, his sister told me the other day. Uh, so, and pray for Sister Joyce. Her blood pressure's been running 200 over 100 and something this week, and she can't keep it down. So, she'll pray the Lord to touch her and Joyce. Also, let's remember uh, Sister Betty and Sister Carolyn, and uh, uh, all of the, the all of their family. Remember all of the ones that's not here. Sabrina, you know, Elena. Lord, I moved. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know that to put a praise on? Amen. How many of you know to put a praise on your prayer request? And start thanking him for what he's already done. He's already did it. I thank God for that. You know, he's already moved it. I wanted to. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about I wanted to give a praise report real quick for uh, uh, prayer request. Um, my son, you know, Connor has been, uh, you know, running from the Lord, and 
says he doesn't believe in God, and God don't exist, and he knows better. But um, he's got a friend named George Minor uh, who's into art with him. They're working art together, but um, who's a Christian. So I want to thank God that he's got a Christian friend. You know, Connor made a comment to me. He goes, you know what? George is really into God <laughs> the other day, you know. And I thank the Lord that my son, who's lost, has a godly friend. You know, I, just, I am so thankful for that. You know, mama can tell them till they're blue in the face. You know what I mean? But it takes someone else sometimes to get through to them. But he knows he's got a praying mama. And he knows that. Um, but I thank God for he's, he's got that friendship with a godly godly person. But I also remember a friend of mine, Shannon uh, Askins. She's been in and out of the hospital. She's back in the hospital again. Something about bile duct. Now they found like a hole in her, uh, I don't know, in her colon or something. She's been through all kinds of just back and forth. It's really, it's really been way heavy on my heart because I had a few friends that, you know, one minute on Facebook, they're like, pray for me, and the next minute they pass, you know. And so I'm really concerned about Shannon because she's having a lot of serious, serious health issues right now. So remember her in prayer. She's, she's about my age, probably a little younger, but... She can't keep anything down or eat. And she's just such an uplifting, positive, you know, godly lady. I mean, she knows she's like, Lord, this, she just wants to be back to the funny person. I said, you're still the funny, happy-go-lucky person you were, you know. And I believe God's going to pull her through that. I had another prayer request, and it skipped my brain, but God knows what it is. <laughs> I also remember Felicia's family. Uh, yeah. As some of you may know, uh, her grandmother passed away. And also remember her other grandmother, she uh, had asked that uh, I be praying for, what is it, her hips? Her hips locked up. Her hips locked up. So remember her in prayer as well. Remember that in prayer. Let's remember our church yeah. and all of the surrounding churches Amen. that uh, the uh, Lord would move in the midst of. I asked for prayer over that young man that got saved over at uh, Pleasant Valley. And when I went back over there and visited, I uh, prayed my, my specific, our, in the house, our specific prayer request was that he had been saved. He just got saved that, that night. But our prayer request was that he get established in the church. Well, I go back and I see him sitting in the pew. So I want to thank God for for bringing him back to the house. Yes. Amen. You know, because it's one thing when somebody gets saved, but it's something else. We can bring them in all day yeah. long. Yeah. And they get saved, but they need to get established. Yes, they do. Amen. And uh, so I want to praise God for that as well. Mom and Betty. Remember my family for uh, the Pope Ness, <clears throat> Michael.
She's been battling a migraine today. Let's continue to pray for her. We'll do that. Let's continue to remember uh, Chucky and Tracy and uh, Stephen and his family. They need to get established and stay established. Yeah. Every one of them. Yeah, rooted and grounded in the Lord. Tammy and Josh and her children and yep. baby. Yeah, pray, pray for the next generation. Um, you know, uh, just, I don't mean to interrupt you, but just those that we just did request in for, if those would come and our records would be here and be full, we'll be, our church would be full, yeah. Yeah. you know, or close to it. And it seems like that church is not their priority. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I say that about, I say that about the ones that, The guys deal with me. God broke the mold when he made me, that's for sure. Oh, that's what he made for me. Yep. Yes, let's also remember um, Kyle. Uh, let's pray for him much. Yes. I mean, the Lord spared no, his life. Family. The Lord spared that, spared that boy's life. They're all going to Dave's right now. Well, praise the Lord for that. Thank the Lord for that. I didn't hear that, but we need to God for that. Um, also, continue to remember um, a pastor up north <clears throat> and uh, a friend of mine. The Lord knows exactly who he is. But also remember my brother in prayer. Um, one, my brother Kai is dealing with a mental battle that's going on, and I can't I can't help him. But I know a man who can. Yes, so that's right. Remember him. You Please. mentioned your brother. That was my other prayer request. My brother Wade, who's in jail um, right now, serving time. Remember him in prayer. Yeah, Lift him right. up, encourage him. You know. Sure remember that. Um, remember Fountain of Life as well in prayer. The Lord's doing mighty things over there too. Just remember, remember the church. Yes. How about that guy that got saved with Gilbert? Anybody still hear from him? I do. I talked to him. He went to the doctor and. Uh, He's having some health problems. Um, I talked. I talk to him pretty regularly. I keep up with him, and, and uh, he he talked about uh, me and Dad. And thankful that you know he said he's never really had people that that continuously keep checking on him and keep uh, talking to him. And you know if I don't call him every two days, he'll end up calling me. So uh, so be praying for him. Be praying for his daughter. Uh, be praying for his wife. And, uh, uh, that I think they've been going and visiting a church up in London somewhere. So praise the Lord for that. So remember them. Uh, don't don't forget our ministries, our clothing yes. ministry, the food ministry. Um, let the church know we're needing food. And, uh, I'm just about out. Praise the Lord.
Right. Just for everybody that's having uh, this revival, mm -hmm. that it won't just be uh, spring in and spring out and go right back to the same yep. thing we're doing. Amen. Remember that. Remember that. Yes. Remember my brother-in-law, he's um, in Indiana. He's the one that lost his wife last year this time. Um, that was really working on him. Um, quite a few, um, I want to say, not so friendly women. That's as nice way as I can put it. <laughs> <laughs> have been hitting on him lately. And he was with my best friend for 32 years, married. I mean, I mean, no, there's nobody. I mean, and they've just been kind of really pushing his buttons lately. And he called me, so he said, please have your church pray for His name's Don Boothroy. Um, he said, I just don't know how much more I can handle. I said, well, here's what you do. I said, you go tell them you're gay. I'm sorry, I did. <laughs> I know, Kevin, if you knew these women, I know these women this. And no, I'm serious. I told him, I said, Tony, that's the same terrible disease. I'm though. serious. I said, I don't know what else to tell him. I would think that would be good. He idea. said, yes. I said, well, you got to tell him something. I said, because I'm telling you now. Stephanie would turn over to her grave. <laughs> Get that section around him for me. Yeah. I didn't know what else to tell him. <laughs> well, so then, you know what he tells me? He said, no, I'm going to tell him that you're coming to visit. Uh, there you go. I said, oh, think you are. no, he knows. <laughs> they know, no, they know I'm, 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 I'm an angel. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> it lies the house of the Lord. Yeah. Um, I mean, just keep them in your thoughts first because they really are, and it's sad that you can't grieve, you know what I'm saying, a loss of your wife or your, or your husband, that people aren't just at you. You got that right. Yeah. And it's so sad because he's got like um, five, they got five kids and like 18 grandkids. Oh, wow. yeah. And, you know, and he just wanted to have Christmas. So, they young, they would be wanting. Pray for Daryl and we're, yeah. we're trying to find a doctor for him, a surgeon. Yes. He has to go through another surgery. I mean, oh. okay. And uh, he's gonna have to go through one to get the screws in his neck down in the bottom part of his spine loosened. He has been walking. Well, praise the Lord. On a walker, so yes. praise God for that. Because they said he never walked. Yes. <laughs> they know it all. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, because yeah. I sort of made him, I took his wheelchair away sometimes. I'll use it myself. <laughs> there you go. I'll use it myself just to say, honey, I need this right now. Well, I really don't. And that makes him walk. So, that's it. Well, praise the Lord. So, he'll do that, and I make him smoke all the way outside. He can't smoke in the house. Because he don't anyway. But I don't let him, he has to go all the way outside. So, that's a little bit of a chore for me. But it's good for him. But pray for us that we can find him a, you know, set someone to help him with the next, you know, thing. Because he's a doctor is a really scary thing, especially yeah. on your spine. Because the last one that done his surgery, we don't know where he went. Well. He is not there anymore with Hazard Air H. We don't know. So we don't know what this doctor has done. So then we got to have another one to go say, oh, well, we don't know what he's done. But, so it's just a scary thing. It's just something to pray for him to have. I <laughs> my lost father as well. Trying to get him in the church, trying to get him to come with me. He's still sort of out. He's just in Severn. And then pray for Daryl because he needs to get back in church some more too. Like you hear Sister Point said, I don't feel well. And I said, well, okay, you know, here we go. And he's like, I'll go one next time. I'm like, okay. Praise report. My daughter will share with you at church talk to me. You guys, right? The one that has the kids. Listen, she's not. I said she's been at church for a long time. Because it was a choice, and we all talked about. Yep. She said, "Mom, she said, um, I know you want me to go to your church, but do you care if I go to another church?" I said, "I don't care as long as you're in church somewhere." Right. That's right. Um, my cousin is Josh Smith, the East Barbell Baptist. If anybody knows who he is in, in Barbell, the big, big church cross the center, he's a preacher there. She said, "Mommy, I'm really thinking about taking the kids and going to China now." That's the best. I've heard her talk for five years. Probably. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And then made her feel, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, praise the Lord. So I was God. happy. Right. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I just want to tell you, today is Amen. your day. Amen. Yes. I said, today is your day. Amen. Amen. Well, come on. I said, today is your day. <laughs> today is the day of miracles. Yes. Today is the day of healing. Today, I'm here to tell you God is fixing to do something in this house. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, we're just scratching at the surface of what God's fixing to do in this house. You better put a praise on it, because I'm telling you God's doing something. Glory to God. Hey, 
saved by God. He's doing something. Yes, amen. Let's stand up together and begin to lift up these unspoken and spoken requests to God because He's doing something. Father, in the name of Jesus, Christ the Nazareth, Lord, we lift up your name, God. God, we ask you that you would infiltrate this place, God. Let your anointing begin to rest upon your people, God. God, that you would touch broken homes, God. Lord God, that you would reach out to the wayward, the backsliders, God. And that you would begin to shake up your people right now, God. God, we ask you to move in this place, God. Move in this hour, God. God, we ask you that you would touch the, the ones that ain't here, God. God, that every spoken and unspoken, heard and unheard request, God, that you would reach out and that you would touch them, God. That you would move upon them, Lord. God, that you would move right now, Lord God. Move in the midst of your people, Father. In the name of Jesus, and we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanks that's due in the your day. Because you are God. You
As we walk on the streets of gold, no pain can start the celebration to life
Yes, yes God. Thank you, Jesus.
As she's coming up, uh, Kelsey, let's go ahead and take up today's offering and tithes given to the Lord as He has blessed you and He'll bless you back. I truly believe that. Glory to God. And if you don't have to give, don't worry. We'll still, uh, he'll still bless you just because you were faithful enough to show up into the house of God. pray over the offering real quick. Lord, thank you for this time of fellowship, Lord. Thank you for us being able to come into your house again, Lord, and bless this funding, Lord, to the to the body of the church, Lord, to the church, Lord, and to help those that need it, Father. We praise you and thank you. Amen. Amen. I feel like I was going to pray for getting ready to eat. But we are getting ready to eat in a minute, the word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the, that's the best you, meat right there. Amen. Amen. He abides. If he abides in your heart, I want to hear you sing it out loud.
didn't want to go do what God wanted him to do. And he said, who made your mouth? Because he said, Moses said, I'm not worthy to do this. I'm not even educated enough to do this. But you don't have to be educated to do what God wants you to do. He will equip you for whatever he wants you to do. And you will know what you're supposed to do. Somebody else will have to tell you that you need to do this or you need to do that.
I get up in the morning, I want the devil to say, oh no, she's up. Amen? I want the devil to say, oh no, she's up. She ain't dead. I didn't kill her. She ain't up and she ain't covered by her blood of Jesus. And you know what? That's dangerous. We need to be dangerous to the devil. We need to be dangerous to the devil. Amen? Thank you. 
God's wonderful peace coming down. Oh, peace, peace. 
version of life. I said, if Jesus does not breathe and stir up a flame, hallelujah, stir up the gifts inside of us, hallelujah, I begin to think about rekindling the fire. Amen. Some have lost their fire. Some, some people have lost their desire. They've lost something that matters. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if we will get in line with the Lord, I promise you, you can see a move of God. And I'm telling you right now, Mama Betty, He'll go out with you. Hallelujah. It'll keep you. It'll sustain you. And no matter what comes away, I want you to know that God is going to move. He's going to move upon His people. He's going to give you a pep in your step. It's going to be something amazing. Amen. Hallelujah. And I begin to stand up there. And oh, my, my, my. I begin to envision a flame. Hallelujah. And then I begin to think, man, if only people could just step into the flame. Yeah. Hallelujah. They could just step into the flame. How many of you have ever seen somebody take a lighter and light a candle? And then they'll take that candle. <laughs> uh, and then they'll put it up to a wick. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that other one will begin to catch on fire. I want you to know something. When Jesus lights a fuse, let me tell you something. He'll light you up. Honey, let me tell you something. Then you can get on somebody else. It's a domino effect. When God begins to move, and you get down, and you start to cry. Oh, 
the inside. Yes. <sighs> Amen. Hallelujah. Dad, we've got a fake fireplace at the house. Oh, it puts off heat. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It'll run you out of there. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. I've got a propane heater on the inside of my little tiny house. Let me tell you something, honey. That thing puts off some real heat. Let me tell you something. People will not go where there is no fire. You better have a real thing on the inside. There better be something backing up on what you got. It better have what God has. Um, I tell you what. I can't stand too close to that propane heater, Mamma. I can't stand too close to I feel the heat. I'm like, man, this is going to send my shirt. Let me tell you something. When you get near the flame and you get right up towards the fire and you get right up where Jesus, my, 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 you get up right next to Jesus. Let me tell you something. Some impurities are going to burn off. Some yeah. are going to burn off. And when you get in line with this man called Jesus, it's going to burn some things. I want you to understand today. That it burned off the old man. I'm a new preacher in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Hallelujah. I begin to think about this fireplace. Mama Benny will uh, turn that thing off. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Because there's something hot in here. It's getting steamy up in here. Because God's beginning to move. And it's starting to look like Christmas all over again. God's passing out blessing. What that one? You better just reach out and take it. Yes, Felicia, do you remember uh, back here a commercial? Hallelujah. There was a, a toaster. And uh, the egos would pop up out of it. And one person would reach out and get it before the other one could get it. I want you to know you ain't getting my blessing because it belongs to me. I get what God has for me. Whether you want it or not. Amen. I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something particular. I know what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. I know what I'm looking for. Most importantly, I know who I'm searching for. Yes. I know who I'm searching for. And when I step into a church house, I got my ears open. Hallelujah. I begin to see that up here. He had his uh, turned over here. Looking towards that, it was like a calf looking through a new fence. You know why? Because the Lord was speaking to him. I knew it. I know what I, I know. I know when the Lord begins to speak. Because that's the only time this big mouth shuts up. It's when God's got something to tell me. Hallelujah, we need to listen. Because I'm telling you, you might be the conduit of the heat that God is trying to use. That's right. I watched. Mama Valerie and Mama Betty and Carolyn were all over here. I believe she was right behind them. And I began to watch. Hallelujah. It didn't take long. Hallelujah. The Lord began to move. Hallelujah. And there began a wind began to blow. Hallelujah. It had knocked right down. Hey, and that was up there. And the wind began to blow. Hallelujah. And he was right out in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you when the real thing's in it. Hallelujah. I don't need my, my, my. I don't need nobody to catch me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, I was watching a video online, Mama. I began to see these people. They were just going around in circle. And buddy, it looked like the Lord threw them. I kid you not. I'm like, whoa. Hey, hey. He caught up in a whirlwind. Hey. Let me tell you something. I want to get caught up in the Holy Ghost wind. I want to get so caught. I've heard Pastor Jerry say it a couple of times. Hallelujah. We're not on no time schedule. Hallelujah. I tell you, let me tell you. Hallelujah. Well, he said, well, if you've got the message, you better go up and preach it. It don't matter if there's one, two, three people. Hallelujah. If the Lord's in it, he's going to bless it. Hey, let me tell you something, friend. I ain't got nowhere to be tonight. I just want to rest in Jesus. Hallelujah. When I walk in the final life, when I walk in Walmart, when we're up in uh, Papa John's, or whether I am in the church house, let me tell you something. Uh, there's something amazing when the fire begins to fall. Yes, amen. But not only can a fire happen, somebody can put it out. Huh? 
Uh, they can put it out as quick as it gets started. Yeah. I've seen people go out of turn down in church yeah, and man. cut it off like a light switch yeah. and kill it. Let me tell you something. It's because they want their show. Right. They want their four and no more. Let me they tell you something, saved. honey. You better get where Jesus is at. You better get down on your knees and begin to cry out. Listen to me. I don't care whether I preach or not. I don't care whether it's uh, Sister Valerie or Mama Betty or uh, I don't care if it's uh, Aunt Angie or Dad. I don't care who's preaching. I just want to know that it's the Lord moving in the midst. I want to know that God's moving. I want to see miracles. Let me tell you something. How many of you know you had church today? How many of you know the Lord began to move in this house? Let me tell you why. Because somebody was striking on the same chord as the Lord. We have waited and watched and tarried for this moment. Uh Hallelujah. We have waited, watched, and guess what? Here it comes. Let me tell you something. King David. How many of you know about King David? Yep. He began to dance his clothes off. Hallelujah. No, keep your clothes on, everybody. Let me tell you something, friend. That he began to dance that robe off. Hallelujah. And I want you to know some of you've got a garment of mourning on. Hey! I want you to know some of you've got a garment of pain on. Some of you've got a garment of depression on. Some of you've got a garment of anxiety on. But I come to tell you, shake it off. Hey, he's giving you some love and praise. Put it on. Glory to God. Put it on. Hallelujah. You still are sitting down. Have you went kitchen what I got going on? Hey, let me tell you something. There's an aroma in the kitchen that God's got cooking up. And three of you better catch me because I begin to feel somebody moving. Because when he burns, 
Turn up the heat. Yeah. How do you live when the heat's turned up? Hmm? I'll tell you how I live. I live by Jesus. Hallelujah. Heat's always getting turned up. Mama Betty, the heat's always getting turned up. It's always seems to be somebody's getting a little bone chilled. Hallelujah. What do you do when you're cold at home? Turn up the heat. Hallelujah. If you're grown cold on God, backslidden and indifferent, you can do what you want. Turn up the heat a little bit. Begin to get on your knees. Push back the pipe because God's up to something. And let me tell you something. When I begin to spend time with God and it's just me and Him, let me tell you something. I'm ready to pop out some quick stitches. Hallelujah. I'm ready to run. Hallelujah. Because I know what I feel on the inside. Hallelujah. They say, well, you ain't... You ain't nothing, Kevin. That's right. You got that right. You done lost your mind. How are you right? I got the mind of Christ. Hey, listen to me. I ain't nobody, but I know somebody. Hey, and when I walk into work, I want somebody to catch on fire. Let me get a little close. Hey, let me get a little close. Let me catch you a little on fire. Let me get close. Because if I get close to you, somebody's bound to catch the wind. Amen. But I've seen a lot of people. Sit back, and I can see God all over the face, ma'am. I can see God moving all over them. And they sit back. And they sit there. And they don't move. You quench in the spirit. That's some dangerous ground. You're right. Let me tell you something. You may be the king. That song. That testimony, that gift, that calling that you're operating in, it may just be the key that God uses to unlock somebody's prison. That's right. It may just be the key that burns some dead stuff off of folk. Yep. Hallelujah. And buddy, this wasn't even nothing that not even close to what I had. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was going to preach about the woman. Who began to put her son up in the in the built room for the man of God and put her dead son in the room and shut the door? This is completely different. But listen, I, the Lord just spoke to me up there, and I'm like, well, this ain't going the way I think it should. It ain't going the way that I wanted to, but that's all right with me. He said, mind me. That's what he told me. He said, follow me and mind me. Let me tell you something, friend, so I don't care what nobody says. Hallelujah. When the Lord tells you to do something, you do what he says, and don't say back. You move forward for God. They don't like me. Well, they don't. They, they might get offended. I've been there. Felicia did it the other day. I was questioning myself. I heard the Lord tell me some things and I sat back. My goodness. And I, I didn't want to sing this song. I just felt uncomfortable doing it. Yeah. But then the Lord said, you need to do it. You need to do it. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. I'm going to do it. Because I'm going to mind my Lord and Savior. And let me tell you something. The Lord touched lives when you mind Him and be obedient to the call of God that's upon your life. And don't sit back. Amen. So tonight, in this area, in this season, God wants to use you as a fire. He wants you to be the one to walk into a church. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Elijah went into the valley of dry bones. Didn't he? He went into the valley of dry bones. Well, guess what? He was alive. And every day, oh, <laughs> and he began to prophesy to the dry bones. Dry bones in the valley. Awake and ye shall live. Let me tell you something. And those dry bones begin to shake on oh my mind. And it begin to come alive. Something begin to touch it. Something begin to stir up. And let me tell you, flesh and strength and bones and muscles and ligaments. I couldn't go through all the body parts because I don't know the anatomy of the body. But let me tell you something. I do know one thing. Let they come alive. And an army was raised up with God. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. God's trying to send you. Listen, listen. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't want to hear this. Hallelujah. He's sending you into some dead places. Some dried up places. And you're going to be the cause of life to come back to them. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you're going to be the cause of the influence of why people come to the Lord. You just watch and wait. Watch and wait. Watch and wait. Because he's going to burn up on the inside of you. And it's going to wrap the bone. Open your mouth and people are going to come to life. Hey, 
He's going to come to life. And let me tell you something. The things that you haven't been looking at, that God is sending you in. Hallelujah. He's going to use you. Hallelujah. Mark it down in your little black book that God is fixing to use you. And watch as he does it. You're going to be amazed. And everybody around is going to be amazed. Why? Because you are going to influence. The power of the Lord is influenced by nothing else but by obedience. Hallelujah. God wants to influence others through you. So the Lord spoke to me. I was standing at, I was washing my hands at work. He told me, I'm going to use you to influence these people in this place to run to me. Oh, my, my, my. He said, I'm going to use you to influence them, to lead them straight to Calvary. And you're going to be the cause of why they run to me. Oh, let me be that cause, Lord. Let me be the reason why they run to you. If it takes you to use me, you use me. Lord, no, Lord, don't refuse me. For surely there's a work that I can do. There's a work that God is doing in our lives. And it ain't over yet. I said it ain't over yet. Better yet, God said it ain't over yet because you still got breath in your lungs. You still got a reason for being here. You've questioned yourself. Why am I still alive? Why am I still here? Because God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He said you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Hey, listen, you are a royal priesthood. And God wants to use you. Amen. That's why you're here. Hey, he'll learn good church. That's why we're still here. That's why you're still here. I got to come over here about a bit. Hallelujah. You begin to beat yourself up. I can see it. It's like you're laying down at night. Oh, my, my. You're laying in the bed. And you begin to beat yourself up, throwing stones at yourself. Hey, I ain't good enough. Nothing I'm doing is working. Let me tell you something. God sees the little things that you're doing. He speaks in the reward you open. Don't beat yourself up no more. Because God is using you. Amen. Oh, they don't like that. But I don't care. Hallelujah. Join the rest of them waiting on me to care. Hallelujah. I want to mind God. Amen. I want to mind it. You've had a lot of chaos going on. Hallelujah. A lot of chaos. A lot of mess. A lot of mess. And you wonder when it was going to end. When you get up. Got quiet in here. I said when you get up. The chaos can't come into your house. When you stand up and obey the Lord. There's a lot of chaos that's going on in your life. But I'm here to tell you that when you stand up, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Do you know what I'm here to tell you? Get up. Hallelujah. Get up and fight against the enemy. You were born a warrior. You were born a fighter. Get up. Get up. Amen. I didn't come up here 
to tell you what Kevin wanted to say. I didn't come up here to tell you what you needed to hear uh, uh, from the world. I come to tell you what the Lord instructed me to say. Hallelujah. Felicia, you can get my Bible and you can look at it. Hey, man, you'll find notes in there, but they're irrelevant at this point. Why? Because the Lord speaks. I'm not saying he can't speak through notes because he does it all the time. Hey, man, but I'm telling you sometimes, like he did for Jonah, he sent him to Nineveh. He said, I need you to go to Nineveh. I need you to preach it. Hey, he had a word designed for when to Pentecost on this Sunday the afternoon and you've got to be mindful of what he wants. Yes. Amen. I can't tell you what sister uh, what sister Sabrina wants. I can't tell you her testimony. You can, I can't tell your testimony and it impacts somebody. But when I tell you the message that God gave to me, hallelujah, it's going to impact. Ha! It's going to impact. And when it impacts something, it's going to change lives. It's going to stir up somebody. Hallelujah. But I want you to know something tonight. If everybody could stand all over this house. Stand up where you're at. Hallelujah. How many of you want to catch a fire again? Hallelujah. How many of you want to catch fire? How many of you desire the fire of the Holy Ghost? How many of you desire? Hallelujah. He said those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Hey, you can have as much of God as you want. Hey, so right now, I want to ask you, how many of you know some people that don't have the fire baptism of the Holy Ghost? Raise your hand. If you know people, how many of you have the fire baptism? Raise your hand. How many of you have got the fire baptism? Raise your hands. Hallelujah, because if you know folk that don't, hallelujah, then you know where they need to go to get the fire. So that means that you need to be hitting your knees right where you're at. Hey, that means you need hey, that means you need to go and you need to lead them straight to the place where you got the fire. Amen. So I want to ask you tonight. Hey, come on up here if you need to, to pray around this altar. Hey, man, you can pray at your seat wherever you want to pray. Hey, man, as they begin to sing a song, something, hallelujah. God is fixing to use you as the one that brings the fire. Hallelujah. The fire that rests on you, it's going to rest on them. Hallelujah. Do you need the fire? Do you need the fire? How many of you want the flame to grow? Those of you who's got it. How many of you want it to get a little hotter? Then you better get a little closer. <laughs> hey, you better get a little closer to Jesus. Hallelujah. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Hallelujah. Get a little closer. Begin to pray, saints. Begin to pray. Hallelujah, you begin to pray. You begin to pray. You begin to talk with the Master. Hallelujah, you begin to get along with God. Now, you may be in a room with folk. Amen. But you can cry out to God and say, Lord, let a fire that can't be quenched, Lord, that can't be contained, that can't be bought. God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord God, that you would begin to catch folk on fire. Lord God, and let you stir up the gift in the Lord God and begin to move. Lord God, we ask that you would begin to move upon lives, that you would transform folk. Lord God, that you would use us as good conduits. Lord God, the ones that are able to withstand the heat of your fire, Lord God. Lord, that we can have that desire. Lord God, that we would get hungry. Lord God, because when we're hungry, that is when you're able to move. God is when we begin to get a little taste. You said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Lord, we want to taste something that we've never tasted so manna. Mama, dance across the floor. These are the ones. 
Sometimes that's the way it happens. I, know oh, yeah, she I heard it. Mom heard it. Bad daddy heard, heard, heard it. They heard it. Yes, ma'am. Glory I, to God. I, 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 I like to say something. Yes. I, I didn't say earlier. I want you guys to pray for me. Um, I am a faith seeker and miracle believer with my family. Yeah. The brain has all that. I'm talking to you today. My husband has been very bad. He's in the heat. He's struggling with his health and stuff. He's not used to this. He's not used to his condition. Years ago, he was jumping around. He mm-hmm. ran in. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. now I'm here. Well, he is struggling with all his muscles. Yeah. Facing the that we're talking about. He's been sober for years, for months now. Mm-hmm. And that was the
condition during the Sunday trial. Yeah. And the case was tried for Yeah. And so basically, my daughter is sitting in the view gate with Sammy. Then Sarah and I have three, you know, each of their stepdads are sitting in the view gate. Okay, we both raised them and you know everything. We lost his first wife when he was uh, 35 and she was 36. They raised 14 years, they never had no children. But she was a great person. And we met two years later, and he was doing great school together, and then we married three years later. And so, basically, uh, this, you know, the girls love as they do, and, and they're up there at and they're just going to stay in one of us. And then we helped raise him, and they were doing things also, but, um, and everything. So we've had four kids, really. But they're all going to church together. We bought church with my daughter and her husband. But the thing is, the thing I'm that facing is that I'm trying to do what I can in my marriage. But my girls are pulling this way, and it's causing division between because I have two grandsons. They're five and one, and I and my son-in-laws are very much whatever their wives say because you know that is what you're supposed to do in a, in a relationship. Well, I, I think so, but Daryl has not. Um, he's they, they didn't even know Daryl was in the nursing home. I'll just be honest with you. They didn't even know he was in the nursing home. They didn't know that he was paralyzed. They didn't know any of this because I couldn't share it with them. And it was an order for me to stick with them. We just couldn't figure out that. They're hurt. They love him. They're hurt. They, they can't believe he went to this point. And they just don't like it. And I just, I want them to forgive him. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But it's mm-hmm. putting division in my family. Mm-hmm. I can't sure, get my relationship. So I'm sorry about, about putting all this on you all. But today when I was praying with her, what's her name, Jerry? What is your name? Mr. Ballard. 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 I had a piece in me. I had a piece of me because, like I said, I had holidays in the ministry and it was delay our Christmas because of wind and all that stuff. And when I was with them, you know, it puts, it puts, it just puts pain in me because I want home to my husband. You know what I'm saying? So, I, and he feels pain. He feels pain. He wants them to forgive him. He wants them to come bring our family back together. You know, Stephen does raise our family. We need them. You know, we need we, all that. So, we just need that process. And, and so pray for me that I can, and, and Sabrina has the same issue, not with, she's a wonderful husband, but they try really hard to lead their family, and she's got some wonderful kids, adult children, she's a great kid. It's just hard when you can't see your grandchildren because of division with your marriage, because of division with your adult kids, and then your I'll tell you what to do with this it's situation, really sister. <laughs> I'll tell you what to do with this situation, and we'll do it with you start pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over the situation. When you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, that's when things can happen. Do you hear me? When we plead the blood of Jesus Christ, that's when things can happen. I love my girls are being cancer because they lose their own stepdad or stepdad family and they don't want to just, you know, he may try something to do it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Just don't sleep with it. It's just like you talk about peace, you know? Yeah. That's the peace. That's the peace I need. To 
celebrating with my family together. That is God's will to be on the move. So I love my and he will do it. Just keep praying and lifting them up <laughs> yeah. to the Lord and plead in the blood. Yeah, you know, I know Daryl's really sorry too. The girls just love him so much, and I just am so upset that he's lifted up his kids so often. And plus, they love me, and they want, you know what I'm saying? They want the best for me. They uh, love him. The, the, thing, the thing is, is that in the Word, you know, there's a woman, like I was going to preach, well, I had it in my notes, um, about the woman whose son had died. She made preparation for the man of God to come. Yeah. The man of God come, uh, they sent, sent a word, a messenger to get the man of God. The man of God come back, and he laid. But before that, she said, all shall be well. Yeah. Yeah. She he began to lay and breathe. Lay and breathe. Lay and breathe. On the outside looking in, it may look a, look a little strange, yeah, the story. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, he laid and breathed in his mouth. Yeah. Let me tell you something. God began to breathe into that dead, to that dead son, and that son come back to life. Yeah. But the, the story, more of the story is you've got to shut the door to your problems. Yes, right. And say, here it is, God. Take the there's no song that says take your burdens to the Lord and right. leave it there. Right. So no matter what you're facing, you leave it at his feet and he'll take care of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all hearts and minds clear. I know it's late. Um did you have something to say? No. I'm okay. Uh, if this clock is right. It's six o'clock almost. The back clock is right. No, five o'clock. Oh, that must be out. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Let's stand and I'm not going to dismiss in prayer, but I do want to have like a five, ten minute business meeting with the church members. Uh, once everybody shakes somebody's hand and uh, tell them that you love them and that Jesus loves them. Yeah, we're <laughs>